Go ahead and look at literally any high school sport competition guidelines are drawn with regards to student body, enrollment, age, weight, class, and skill level. Why is all of this being done? In the interest of fairness and, of course, safety. So why in the world are these very sensible guidelines completely disregarded when it comes to gender? Does that make any sense to you? It doesn't make any sense to me. This latest story sparking outrage coming out of Wisconsin, where parents have expressed concern over a potential transgender competing in a girl's sport. Parents there have noticed that their daughters are returning home from practices with bruises and welts they didn't have before on their bodies. And one of the parents noted that she is not even opposed to a transgender athlete having a seat at the table when it comes to competing in sports. But that seat should not be at the same table as biological females. Former NCAA swimmer Riley Gaines has been one of the most outspoken advocates on the forefront against transgender athletes competing in women's sports. And she is here with us and she is joined by power lifter April Hutchinson, who's also been forced to compete against men. Uh, welcome, ladies, to Frontline. Thank you very much. Riley, I'll start off with you first. Uh, let's take a look at this tweet from former NBA player Ennis Freedom. Part of his tweet reads, since I'm blackballed from the NBA, should I put on a wig, identify as a woman, and start dominating the WNBA? <laughs> he does have a point there. <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's the whole thing. Um, it's comical. It's like you're reading a Babylon Bee headline, but it's reality. That's what we're seeing happening time and time and time again. That's what we saw happen with Leah Thomas. I mean, I mean, let's think about Mike Tyson. What if Mike Tyson put on a wig, got in a ring, and started beating up on women? It would be okay, because that's what they've allowed. That's the standard they've set. So while that's comical, it's reality. And Riley, I know listening to a lot of your testimony, the fact that you had to, you're a young girl and you had to change and, and see another man naked in front of you with full genitalia, Leah Thomas there, the swimmer. I mean, people need to understand that young women should not have to be exposed to this. I was an athlete myself my entire life. I played basketball. I played soccer. I can't even imagine I, that my innocence would have been shattered this way because that, that's essentially what happens. It's humiliating. It's violating. And these people, they're doing it in the name of, of being kind being inclusive, let me tell you what, it is not kind to ask a young girl to undress in front of a fully intact male, exposing male genitalia. That's not kind, that's perverse, that's disgusting, and quite frankly, to call it exactly what it is, it's sexual harassment that we dealt with. The NCAA, they forced us to participate in this man's fetish. Mm. In, in April, have you had a, I know you competed also against men. I mean, like, that that can't be easy. No, it, it just happened uh, yesterday. Um, a 40-year-old, 250-pound uh, man who basically transitioned after puberty just won the uh, national records, all of them yesterday. He has the highest deadlift in powerlifting history for my federation. And basically laughs about it, mocks women, you know, no big deal. And, you know, that's something that myself, I've been working at for years just to try to get to that level. Even people like the, the world champion has not got to that level. And he just took all the records yesterday. And you talk about safety, like this is not a contact sport, but I tell you, our mental health and just the fact to try to keep up with a man, the training and the injuries and the strains on muscles, it's, it's unbelievable. It really is sickening how this is happening. And why do you think more women don't speak out? Well, for, my, for example, I know like probably 85 to 90 percent of the women in my federation, you know, they'll write me behind the scenes. Oh, thank you for standing up. Thank you for speaking up. Everyone is so afraid to get sued or they don't want to hurt people's feelings. But then they don't think about, well, you know, prime example, what if my daughter gets hit by a, a a male on the, the rugby field. Well, something. now you have a lawsuit. Now you, in some cases, MMA, you have violence against women. You're now condoning violence against women. Absolutely. Uh, Riley, I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, the CNN article from the weekend 
Take a look at this. I mean, I cannot believe that a, a so-called news organization, they put out a guide to neo-pronouns, uh, and the examples listed are absurd. They almost sound made up. Uh, Z, uh, Zier, uh, Fay. I mean, really? I, I just, wow. Wow, what is happening to our, our world these days? Earlier we had on we had on Carrie Lake and she joked around, but it's true. She was milking a cow and she dared a New York Times reporter, come on, I dare you to milk a bull and see what would happen to you. <laughs> our education levels are as low as they've been in 33 years. Kids don't know how to read, they don't know how to write, um, yet we're teaching them this, as you said, this looks like a bunch of letters just pushed together. Mm -hmm. uh, me being a college graduate, and I would consider myself relatively smart, I don't even know if I can pronounce half those words. I'm like, what does X-A-E even sound like? Because it's not natural. What, uh, what even is this? <laughs> I just imagine, truthfully, I've been imagining our founding fathers in their wigs and stockings trying to understand the point of where we are today. And I, I crack up at it. They have to be just rolling over laughing, but also just... I mean, cracking up at this. It's comical, as I mentioned. It's comical, but then you see a lot of people actually going along with it. April, what do you, what do you think? Do you get any backlash from people when you appear on Newsmax, when you talk the good fight, when you say enough is enough, I don't want to compete against men? Honestly, I haven't had any major negative backlash because, you know, I'm, I'm here in Canada. A lot of people are too polite, too kind, you know, but... As far as the neo pronouns, like I will not subject my brain cells to that. I will not be any part of that garbage. I live in reality. I'm not delusional, and I would prefer to stick to reality. And I honestly, I call a spade a spade. And if you take athletes like Riley and I, if we started to call a man a woman or that a man could become a woman, well, there goes our fight for fairness in sports. As soon as we bow down to that ridiculousness, the, it's over. So, and I will not be part of that. Riley, we have 30 seconds left. I know you've been threatened, but you continue to speak out, so bravo to you. Do you ever say, you know what, I, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm scared. That's what they want. They want to deter us. They want to silence us. And, and that's why they resort to violence. That's why they resort to, to name-calling, to, to personal attacks and threats. It's because they want to keep us quiet. But we should look at that as actually encouragement. When they, when they have nothing else, they'll resort to those things, and it means they want you to be quiet. And so my, my thought process is they don't waste ammunition on something they don't want to hit. We are right over the target, and they know that. As long as you have the truth on your side, you should never be afraid. Riley and April, thank you guys, and keep up the good fight. Of course. Thank you.